Hello, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the most talked about lookup look up function um, that, oh, let me say the most anticipated lookup function. And you guessed right, it is XLOOKUP. Um, I've had a couple of people ask, oh, Tyler, let's, let's have a tutorial on XLOOKUP. Oh, so here we are. And um, a note of caution, if you're using an earlier version of Excel, you're not going to find XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP came with the new and improved Excel 2021. However, it was added to Excel 2019 as an date so if you have excel 2019 next look up should really pop up for you excel 2021 guys you're good and my g's that are always using microsoft <laughs> office 365 i tell you you already have it so nothing to worry about so microsoft 365 excel 2021 and excel 2019 you should be fine by finding xlookup in your excel environment so let's quickly talk about xlookup so think of that guy that can slice anything so all the all the stress of having to know vlookup index and match hlookup it goes away and it just wipes out once X lookup comes into the picture. How fantastic is that, right? So X lookup basically slices anything and you can find anything, whether it's to the right or to the left or to the top or to the bottom, you know, and that's how amazing X lookup has been since its launch. So we're going to be looking at X lookup with about six examples or depending i'll just explain the basics on the board. Then we'll go to the uh, Microsoft Excel environment and we'll look at how XLOOKUP can play out whenever you're working with a large data set. And in this case, we'll work with large data sets. We'll twist it and, you know, make sure we work with <laughs> rigorous Excel data set. It could be any kind of data set that we can come across in real life. Right, so we'll look, look about around the basic XLOOKUP function. We'll look at how we can use XLOOKUP to fix the not available or the errors that you usually see. This hashing is that you usually see <laughs> when the value is not available in your table, how you can use that x lookup to to fix that usually naturally before now you would naturally nest if error with a v lookup i mean use all the two of them together to fix your ash is but x lookup and kids can take care of it once and for all and we'll use how we can use x lookup in, in place of h lookup isn't that fantastic right we'll then also look at how we can use x lookup wildcard argument there is um so we can use it to find a partial match so you remember the first name of somebody but you don't know their last name you can use xlookup to you know put to call it forth to to look it up for you um using xlookup for approximate match so you basically have data set that has 50.100 and you probably want to find the nearest number to 50,000 or the nearest number to 60,000, right? XLOOKUP can basically find an approximate match, whether it is lesser than or greater than, depending on what you specify, we will look at that. Um, using XLOOKUP for a two-way lookup, and this is very, very, um, this is where a little bit of automation comes in. The two-way lookup is my favorite, <laughs> my favorite um, in XLOOKUP. You can basically use it to look at the rows at the same time, be looking at the columns, and we'll also apply data validation concepts in it. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad we've, we've touched data validation before now, so it won't be new to us. If you haven't seen data validation, please jump, 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 jump back to the earlier videos on the channel and watch data validation because you're going to have to also enjoy XLOOKUP, using XLOOKUP for a two-way lookup. So let's quickly look at the arguments in XLOOKUP. There are about three major arguments. There are other arguments, but they are optional. And it's in that, it's in those optional arguments that all this other fantastic thing can actually even happen, right? So we'll look at how we're taking the optional argument. But for the purpose of talking on the board, let's look at X lookup, the basic X lookup with the basic argument without the optional argument. So in X lookup, you're already familiar with some of these arguments. We have the lookup value. We have our lookup value. We have a lookup array and we have our return array. So lookup value is what? Lookup array is where? And return array is, okay, what do you want me to return? Wait, 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 where should I look? To return your results so for example like this is our age data um if i want to find the I want to find the age of michael michael is 28 years old right if i want to find the age of michael how that will pan out for me in x lookup would be something like um my lookup value my lookup array and my return array so in this case i don't have to think of index and match right my lookup value is michael right my lookup array i'm looking for michael in the and the name column, right? That's the lookup array where my lookup value resides, right? And my return array is where 
the array where the result is in. The array where the result is in is the H column. So lookup value will be Markle, and lookup array would be the column A A1 to A5, and return array will be B1 to B5. And we're done with X lookup. And we get our answer. We get Michael's age, which is 28. So let's plug that in. And uh, we'll write X lookup, X lookup, open my brackets, my lookup value. I can either reference Michael. I can either reference Michael or put Michael in inverted commas and write Michael. I mean, it's case sensitive. <laughs> I write Michael. And um, I'm going to... Say my lookup array, where would I find Michael? Is in the name array, right? So it's a name. And I'll say I'll say array A1 to A5. Hopefully that's A5. <laughs> A1 to A5. Right. And I would also um that's A1 to A5. My return array is age, is the age I'm looking for that I want X lookup to return, and that's B1 to B5. So that will give me 28 as the age of Michael. All right. And um, let's go into the Microsoft Excel environment. Let's see how XLOOKUP will really, really work in our product name, um, we need to find our price and number of reviews. So using one powerful formula or one powerful function, we can get it. We don't need to be coupling formulas. So I'm just going to write my equal to XLOOKUP. Lookup value, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this 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 particular toy, creativity for kids, you know, just places, this, this truck, truck toys. And um, I'll basically tell Excel, look up, look it up in an array. So this creativity for kids, it's definitely under the product description column. I just don't know where exactly, I don't know the price, right? So I'm just going to highlight the entire product description column because there are, there are a lot of things there. I'm going to highlight the entire column, comma, return array. What do I want it to return back? I want it to return the price, right? I'm just going to basically highlight the price column. And that is basically going to take care of the basic um, arguments that are not optional inside XLOOKUP. So I'll just highlight that and I will close my brackets and I'll hit my enter button. And I have a price. And isn't that, you know, wonderful? <laughs> right. So, so that's, um, that's the way you can use XLOOKUP to, um, to get, to get items out. Now that XLOOKUP has found our price for us for this particular name of toy, we then need to, um, we don't want to rewrite the formula all over. We want to extend it to a number of reviews. We also want to extend it to the remaining four products. However, a note of warning, you need to lock yourself because Excel basically jumps relatively depending on what you're working on. So, so to drive you home, let me just let me extend, let me extend it just like we saw in index and math. Let me extend it to a number of reviews and we'll see that it will be wrong. And if I drag it down still, it could also be wrong. So let me extend this to a number of reviews with what we have inside this formula. Trust me, it's not easy, it's number of reviews that this guy has, and I'm going to extend it here also and this would not be correct in the sense that i mean we could we could take a we could take a quick look we could take a quick look at um transformer studio so i would do ctrl c and um i want to look for this product name the price and the number of reviews all right so i want to look for the price and number of reviews while the price will be correct the number of reviews would not be correct so I'm going to paste that in there. Transformer Studio Series, right? Right, even rule 77. Now, the price is $32 and the number of reviews is 209. However, what we have here says $32.5381. Now, one thing that Excel has done is it has shifted as a re relatively. Now, if we look at um, if we look at what it is referencing here for lookup value. Is referencing F3, is referencing this $32, right? And looking up uh, and uh, as a lookup value to so wherever I see $32, and uh, is referencing this as a lookup value and um, picking something else, is picking B, is picking B, the entire column B as its lookup array, and is returning from number of reviews. And that isn't, um, that isn't what we want to achieve. So this would be wrong. So I would take all of this out, including this. So how do we fix this? 
in this case, there are two things we need to take note of. What are, you need to basically look into your argument. What is the thing that is changing? What is the thing that is not changing? So let's look at it. Let's tear it down. So in our E2, our E2 is our lookup value, right? This is our lookup value. Our lookup value is changing, but slightly. How is it changing? It's the same column E, right? Because eventually, by the time we want to drag down, it will become, while this is E2, it, the next one will become E3, then E4, then E5, E6, and so on and so forth, which means E is a constant. So we would, would lock E, then we leave the, the row number. So I'm just going to lock the column here. I'll put the dollar sign in front of the column. And um, again, the next argument says, um, the lookup array. That's our, so our lookup array is still product description column is not changing. We are not moving to the price column. That's our lookup array because our lookup value is a product name, is a product description, right? So our lookup array is not changing. It's still the same lookup array. So I'm going to lock both. I'll, I'll lock everything. <laughs> so I'll press F4 to lock both. And um, what's the next one? Return array. Return array this time around, we want it to change, right? Because the next thing is number of reviews. I would want it to be able to shift. So I'll leave that guy out because I really want it to change. So I'll just, I need Excel to shift to the next one. So I'll hit enter button and I can then extend it. And uh, I'll change this number, number formatting to, I'll change this back to number. So you see number and I really don't want um, decimal places there. Um, right, so, now you can safely then drag down. So you basically fulfilled for if, it were, if you were dragging from left to right and if you're dragging from top to bottom. So I can safely drag down now and you're, you're faithfully fulfilled X lookup and this would be more correct than what, you had, what had been done earlier.